merciful love of the Lord fills the earth by the word of the Lord. The heavens were made. Alleluia. Good morning. I'm Monsignor Tom Fryer. It's my pleasure to be with you today as we celebrate this pre-recorded Mass for, for people throughout the country from here at the Basilica of the Immaculate Conception, the Cathedral here in Denver. As we bring ourselves, let us do so in the name of the Father and of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. And with your spirit. As we bring ourselves to the Lord to begin this day, let us call upon his mercy, for we need it daily. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You have shown us the way to the Father. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You feed us with your body and your blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on, on, earth, peace, peace. And on earth peace to people of goodwill. We, we praise you, we bless you, you we adore you, we, we glorify you. you. We, we give you thanks for your great glory. glory. Lord God, God Heavenly God, King, King, O God, Almighty God, Father, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ only Lord begotten God, Son, Lord God, God, Lamb of God, Son of, God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, lead us to a share in the joys of heaven so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said, Leaders of the people and elders, if we are being examined today about a good deed done to a cripple, namely by what means he was saved, then all of you and all the people of Israel should know that it was in the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. In his name, this man stands before you, healed. He is the stone rejected by you the builders, which has become the cornerstone. There is no salvation through anyone else, nor is there any other name under heaven given to the human race by which we are to be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. Give praise to the Lord, for he is good. 
His mercy endures forever. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. I will thank you for you have answered me and you are my savior. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done, a marvel in our eyes. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house, exalt you, O Lord. You are my God, I praise you. My God, I exalt you. Give praise to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, see what love the Father has bestowed on us, that we may be called the children of God. Yet, so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do know that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. I am the good shepherd, says the Lord. I know my sheep, and mine know me. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading this day from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. A good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. A hired man who is not a shepherd and whose sheep are not his own sees a wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf catches and scatters them. This is because he works for pay and has no concern for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. And I know mine, and mine know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. These also I must lead, and they will hear, hear my voice. And there will be one flock, one shepherd. 
That is why the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own. I have power to lay it down and, I, and power to take it up again. This command I have received from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It is probably one of the earliest and most popular analogies that the Christian community used to refer to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And in this Easter season, every year, on this fourth Sunday of Easter, we celebrate what is called the Good Shepherd Sunday, recalling Jesus identifying himself as our Good Shepherd. His role as a shepherd is not like the typical roles of shepherds. They would force their flocks out to the pastures, they would make sure that they were cared for, but they would not take the lengths that Jesus did. Jesus leads them, not pushes them. He leads them. He does what we are called to do. He even says, I lay down my life for my sheep. Shepherds didn't lay down their life for their sheep. Jesus is no ordinary shepherd. And in the Easter season, we recognize that he is leading us to that which is the ultimate goal for all of us, the promised land of heaven as him first laying down his life in the crucifixion and taking it up again in the resurrection, which is what we celebrate. But the imagery of the Good Shepherd is so strong from early on. I remember the first time I was in Israel and saw a statue they had dug up from an early Christian community area that was a, a man carrying a sheep on his shoulders. It was the Good Shepherd. In Rome, they will tell you at the catacombs that some of the earliest decorations on the catacomb tombs were the image of the Good Shepherd. Throughout this season of Easter, we've been hearing Jesus appearing to his disciples and explaining to them the scriptures that they had heard all along, but they didn't realize referred to him. Well, we're seeing that again today. In the first reading, we have Peter using a phrase that comes from Psalm 118. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. Jesus is that which was thought by those around him who are in authority, oh, this is not important, get rid of it. But he is the cornerstone, he is the foundation of all that is good and life-giving. And he is the good shepherd. Jesus, like all the disciples, would have used that book of Psalms not just as a reminder of the history, but as a prayer book to bring them to the Lord. And one of the more beautiful psalms that we look at still with great fondness is Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. My friends, in this Easter season, on this week of the Good Shepherd, it's good for us to recognize the words were there all along. He was telling us, the scriptures were saying it, we just needed to have our eyes and our minds opened. And I would encourage you on this fourth week of Easter, take some time this week with Psalm 23. Read about our Good Shepherd, how he cares for us. He laid down his life for us. He's going to lead us to that ultimate goal that we all yearn for, the fullness of peace and light and grace in the presence of our God. May God bless you. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. 
He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Confident that God's goodness has overcome the power of evil, we now bring our prayers and set them in the light of Christ's resurrection. Let us pray for God's holy church, that the Pope and all bishops would be faithful instruments in the hands of the Lord, with lives conformed to the mystery of his cross and bearing witness to his mighty resurrection. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the world and our community, that by the power of Jesus rising from the dead, all forms of sin and evil, which are permitted or tolerated by law, would be legally upended and spiritually atoned for. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all those who are in need of God's mercy, that those who are made to suffer because of false ideologies and moral cowardice on the day would find their true identity and freedom in the risen Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all the holy souls, that God would grant them a share in Christ's resurrection. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us in the silence of our hearts add our own special intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty and eternal God, as we thank you for the unmerited gift of redemption, we ask that you hear and answer these prayers, which we offer in the name of the risen Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we've received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we've received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. <clears throat> Wash me, Lord, my iniquities, cleanse me from my sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to loud you yet more gloriously, when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For what the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth, 
are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Samuel, our Bishop, his assistant, Bishop Jorge, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who please you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called at the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The Good Shepherd has risen, who laid down his life for his sheep and willingly died for his flock. Alleluia. Let us pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless and keep you all, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, let the holy anthem rise, and the choirs of heaven chant it in the temple of the skies. Let the mountains skip with gladness, and the joyful valleys ring, with hosannas in the highest to our Savior and our King. Pre-recorded TV Mass is made possible by the Archdiocese of Denver and the Catholic Foundation. Hi, I'm Father Matthew McGee, a priest here in the Archdiocese of Denver. And each week, people from across Colorado, around the country and the world, Tune in to TV Mass here each Sunday. On the air since 1966, TV Mass continues to bring the Word of God to those who cannot attend. For more information and ways to support TV Mass, please visit thecatholicfoundation.com.